Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Researchers Excellence Network is welcoming you to this morning session. I know that it's quite difficult to wake up in such an early morning, but still we are having great pleasure to host a visiting professor from Italy, Fabio Papa. Good morning. And uh, this is our pleasure to have a nice uh, public lecture about ethics and anti-corruption policy, the hot issue for all countries. I would like to welcome uh, participants in this room because we have some special guests from Special Investigation Office, uh, which is responsible for anti-corruption policy in Lithuania and the monitoring on, of those processes as well as we have some students and lecturers interested in this hot issue. I would like to welcome everybody who are online uh, connecting to this discussion. I would like to remind everybody that you have the possibility to give questions for the, our professor uh, for, for these issues. And at the same time, uh, people who are connecting to this public lecture online having are having the possibility to give some questions online, please use the chat line. So, Professor, uh, I will give you uh, the floor and uh, welcome to Sholei University. Thank, thank you. you very much. Good morning and uh, thank you everybody. Thank you for coming here and thank you for the invitation. So today uh, we are going to discuss ethics and anti-corruption policy and problems and issue in the country where I come from, Italy. And as you will see from my presentation, uh, unfortunately, I'm going to say many bad things about Italy because data show that the situation uh, in terms of corruption and anti-policy um, is anti-corruption policy. Sorry, is very very critical. Uh, I will uh, introduce just myself for the people that don't know me. Uh, I am specialized in business management. I have studied and I teach also at Luke University in Italy. And uh, now I'm uh, teaching at St. Petersburg State University in Russia, uh, in Czech Republic, in Ostrava. And I founded with uh, a research team uh, back in Italy uh, a research center called Institute of Applied Economic Research that is specialized in strategic development, organizational sustainability, and supporting many in Italy industries in going abroad. As uh, I already shown to my student, this is my team from Italy, uh, uh, an Italian team made by these people that are mainly from Luke University, uh, and we study every day um, about every year, sorry, about 100 companies working in Made in Italy industries. So let's go back to the main topic that is related to corruption and ethical problems all around the world. First of all, I want to say that corruption problems and ethical problems are not just related to my country, but are related to the whole world. Okay? We, know, we know that you know, a lot of people in many countries have a lot of problems because of corruption. Corruption and unethical uh, attitudes and procedures uh, are causing every day a lot of difficulties all around the world, making people suffering. Okay, making people suffering because of uh, the lack of respect of rules, because of unethical procedures and, uh, let's say, activities. In this scenario, what I will do? First of all, I will tell you nice things about my country. I will tell you. Uh, what's going on in Italy, in, let's say, in beautiful terms. Then, unfortunately, I have to shock you okay, uh, by saying the truth about my country in relation to ethical problems, corruption problems, and the situation that is now going on in Italy. Okay. So let's start from the beginning. If I tell you something about Italy, at first you should know that Italy is among the top and biggest world economies. It means that Italy, even though has a lot of problems, and I will show you in a while which problems we have, is a country that is still quite rich. Okay, it's not as rich as the United States or Japan or China, but our 
annual GDP, gross domestic product, is still one of the highest in the world. So this is a good, let's say, thing for our country, of course. This result is mainly given by the fact that even though we will have a lot of problems that I will show you, we have a lot of wonderful products, uh, mainly coming from food industry, furniture industry, um, fine machinery industry, and, and so on, that of course made Italy very famous all around the world. You all know which are these products, or you, you know many Italian brands. For this reason, as uh, we are, let's say, quite famous all around the world, we also represent one of the most relevant and largest world manufacturers in the world in terms of value created. As you can see, Italy is seventh in the world, okay, just behind China, United States, and the others. At the same time, as I'm just telling you at first, not to shock you so much at the beginning at least, uh, something good about Italy, at the same time, we are also the fifth most visited country in the world. As you can see, these are the touristic inflows in Italy uh, till 2015. And as you can see here, we are the fifth most visited country in the world. Unfortunately, we are not the first. Uh, and uh, you will discover why during my discussion. I can anticipate that we are not the first, not because Italy is not the most beautiful country in the world, but just because we have a lot of problems with services, we had a lot of problems with logistics, we had a lot of problems with tourism management, and this is a lack of, let's say, cultural tourism management that uh, uh, is also connected to problems related to ethics, uh, problems related to corruption, problems to a related to a world system that is not ready yet to, let's say, make the big step. Last but not least, about nice things about Italy. Italy is also at the top for life expectancy. It means that people from Italy, are, let's say, they live long. Okay, As you can see, at first we have Monaco, and then we have the other countries, and Italy is the fourth. So, nice things about Italy. But now let's try to focus more on what's going on. We have a population in Italy of about almost 60 million people. Okay, as you can see, there is a comparison with, uh, with Germany and Lithuania. And we have also a GDP per person that is, of course, behind Germany. Okay, as you can see, it's far behind Germany uh, and is a bit better of Lithuania. But let's start with the bad things and about my idea with uh, Italy and the big problems that we have with corruption, ethics, and anti-corruption policies. My question is, why fighting corruption in Italy and why it matters so much for economic growth? As you will see in a while, if we don't fight corruption and if we don't keep on uh, improving our situation, our country will suffer from a lot of problems, especially social issues Okay, that I will show you in the next slide. But as you may know, this is uh, a figure from the Corruption Perceptions Index. Uh, red states are the most corrupted one, while yellow states or orange states are the less corrupted one. As you can see, the whole world is quite corrupted. Okay, There are areas like uh, the one where I live, Italy, Russia, South America, and so on, where there is uh, much more corruption. There are other places like, for example, the United States or the Scandinavian countries that are not far away from you, that are far better in terms of, let's say, transparency and ethical procedures and activities. So looking at this picture, we can say that, unfortunately, Italy, as you can see, is one of the most corrupted countries in Europe. Okay, And another problem that we see is that uh, is uh, more corrupted, okay, even though in the slide it's not very clear, is more corrupted, for example, of neighboring countries like France, Germany, and let's say the advanced economy that we have in Europe. So this is the first bad news, okay? If we want to go deeper, I can also sh show you mm, the, the chart, the, the, the rank, in which you say that Denmark, for example, Finland, Sweden, Switzerland, are the less corrupted countries in the world. 
Uh, as you can see, uh, even though sometimes I've heard from my students in Lithuania that uh, Lithuania suffers from uh, corruption problems, I can tell you that in Italy the situation is worse. Okay? It's worse, as you can see, you are 38, okay, while we are 60. And the degree of corruption is in Italy is far higher than in Lithuania. This is not something that comes from me, but it comes from a certified source, the Corruption Perception Index. As you can see, uh, we are fortunately better than Romania, okay, uh, or uh, of um, Hungary, Cro Cro sorry, we are even worse than Romania, Croatia, and the others. We are better of uh, South Africa, Senegal, Oman, and Montenegro, and so on. So, the first message is that the situation about ethics and corruption in Italy is very, very bad. Why? It's very bad because the culture of social relationships in Italy is far stronger than the culture of respecting rules. As you can see here, the, in the top 10, even though in the slide you cannot see very well, so from Denmark till Germany, these countries are very famous all around the world for respecting rules. It means that they care about respecting rules. Okay? They care about respecting the state. They care about respecting people. In Italy, unfortunately, uh, as you can see, it's not like this. We don't have this kind of approach. We more have a social approach. It means approach related to uh, individual relationships, one-to-one -one relationships. And this leads to a lot of problems like scarcity of meritocracy and more in general, uh, corruption procedures. The other problem is that we don't live in a fast-growing area. It means that Italy is not included in a place, a geographical place, a macroeconomical area that is growing. So not only the problem is that we have corruption problems, but at the same time, we are not included in a place that is growing. This means that we cannot afford to be corrupted, OK? Because you know, the more you are corrupted, the more you create problems to the state, the more you create problems to your economy. And as you can see, we live in an economy, in an area that is not, unfortunately, growing at all. While Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa are growing in terms of GDP and are growing even faster than the world economy. Another huge problem that is uh, reflected by corruption problems that we have in Italy is connected to public debt. Public debt means that the state has to give back money to lenders every year. Okay? What happens? This is the chart of the top 10, the top 10, sorry, the top nine uh, nations for public debt in the world. Okay? For example, as you can see, Italy is in the third place, and there is written 159.3. It means that out of 100 euro, okay, we have to give back as a state 159 euros. So we have to give back more than what we earn okay, every day. And what does it mean? And why we arrived to this level? First, because of politics okay, and politicians. Politicians uh, um, over these, uh, during these years in Italy, especially during these decades, didn't manage the country in the proper way. And this is the result. As you can see, even Greece, that was uh, almost in default during the, the, the last years, as the same, is in the same situation, Portugal as well, and so on. So there is a link, a direct connection between uh, not well-managed countries okay, and public debt plus corruption. So if you are a corrupted place, if you are a not well-managed state, you will have a huge public debt. And in fact, for Italy, Greece, also Portugal, Spain, and many other countries, this is especially true. OK? So second message is that our state is full of debt, public debt, and this is a huge problem. This doesn't happen in Lithuania. In fact, if you look at data, uh, in Lithuania, the situation is totally different. Uh, maybe mm, a lot of people uh, from Lithuania complain about Lithuania, but in a few slides, you will discover that Lithuania is more competitive than Italy. Okay? It's more competitive than Italy and has some strengths that Italy doesn't have. Okay? So the first one is the fact that uh, 
the public debt okay is far um, lower in Lithuania than in Italy and Germany so it means that out of 100 euro that you earn you have to give back just 40 euro while we have to give back in 2017 132 euros while Germany is uh, at 68 euros so Lithuania is the best okay here and I think it's very very important to say so because you know local people always complain about their, their pace while we have to look at data to understand which is the situation another huge problem that we have related to corruption that is a result of corruption and uh, of a scarcity of n uh, let's say non widespread uh, meritocracy is, un is um, unfortunately related to unemployment unemployment as you may imagine is a social problem because if you don't work you don't turn if you don't turn you cannot make a living and if you cannot make a living uh, you will have social problems social issues you cannot have a family you cannot afford to buy a house a car nothing okay what happens in Italy it happens that we are the worst again between the three and this is due to the fact that politicians uh, were not able have not been able to sustain the labor market in Italy and uh, maybe they were more occupied in doing other things that I will show you in, in a while so what happens it happens that out of 100 people 11.7 people in Italy are without a job okay and it's a problem in Germany the situation is far better and in Lithuania also is far better this uh, figure uh, can be made even worse by if you consider the social problems and differences that we have in Italy between the northern part and the southern part if you take these statistics in the southern part of Italy where there is Naples Palermo Bari Rome and you focus on the percentage of unemployment between young people you will see a percentage that is very very close to 32 percent 32 percent it means that out of 100 people 32 young people cannot find a job that's a problem okay okay so uh, as you can see here the third message is that not only we have corruption problems not only we have public debt problems related to corruption issues we also have as a result the fact that people cannot find a job very easily okay so this is a, a huge problem just going very fast on this I will show you that uh, how, how is uh, let's say um, structured our economy in terms of GDP as you can see uh, we are not very much concentrated on agriculture we are less concentrated on industry than Germany and Lithuania while we are more concentrated on services as you can see 73 percent of our GDP comes from services but the problem is not about agriculture it's not about it's not about service it's not about the industry the problem in Italy is not just related to corruption but it's also related to very low level of labor productivity in fact in a place in which there is no meritocracy in a place in which there is corruptions corruption there are ethical problems also labor force is not willing to be productive it means that maybe if you got a job just because you know that guy and not because you deserved it you know your productivity maybe will be not that much high because you don't deserve that job you just are there because you know somebody has said that you were you needed to be there and as you can see the the, the labor productivity is not uh, high in Italy and is not growing at all while in Germany and in Lithuania is uh, slightly growing at the same time uh, workers are not that much productive in Italy and I will show you further data about that and at the, but at the same time they cost a lot of money in fact if you compare the labor cost of Germany Lithuania and Italy you will see that uh, in Lithuania people are more productive but they cost less okay this is labor cost per hour while in Germany they are quite productive but of course they cost more while in Italy they are not productive and they cost a lot of money so as you can see 
if we are in a pro in a country that has ethical problems, okay, like corruption, ethic, uh, ethical, uh, let's say mismatch, um, public debt, and so on, and there is no meritocracy, you will see what that if you are an entrepreneur and you have to pay people, they will be a bit lazy, but at the same time you have to pay them a lot of money. Is that good? Is that is this ethical? Of course not. Okay. And uh, in this scenario, I want to show you something even worse that is related to the fact that our uh, country uh, is a, a very old country in terms of uh, population. This means that changes cannot happen very fast, okay? Because people have a very old mentality. This is especially true not only in politics, where if you are not uh, 85, you cannot be the, the president of our country. But at the same time, it's especially true for companies. Uh, in fact, companies are mainly ruled uh, by people that are between 65 and 80 years old. And this makes uh, companies not that much competitive and more in general, let's say, far behind, um, let's say, other countries that are run by young people go to the US in Silicon Valley, Germany, the Netherlands, France, people are mainly, um, pe people at the power are mainly younger, and that's a problem, okay? We see it every day in companies where we work with uh, entrepreneurs that have to shift from the, young genera from the old generation to the young generation, and you will see that there will be a lot of problems, okay? So in such a bad situation, what people do? I have discovered, and uh, I was quite surprised, that people in Italy like gambling, like going to casinos and so on. And as you can see from this chart, we are the eighth top economy uh, in the world to spend money in gambling. So my mm, explanation is that when you have social problems, when you have uh, also you know, no meritocracy, maybe you get a bit, uh, let's say, demoralized, you start doing the, this thing, no? So mm, this is something that we should uh, think about. Gambling is unfortunately in Italy controlled by uh, organized criminality, okay? Organized criminality is uh, one social and one historical issue that we have uh, in Italy. This issue is not just from the movie, it's not just from you know the American movie or the Italian movie, but it's an issue, as I will show you in a while, that creates and has been creating a lot of problems. As you can see from this map, uh, um, Italy is uh, especially hit by organized criminality, corruption, and ethical problems, especially in the southern part of Italy. So it means uh, from Rome, Naples, till Sicily uh, here. In, uh, in, as you can see here in the map. We have, unfortunately, different kind of organized criminality, uh, but let's say that they work uh, in the same way. What they do? First, they control the economy, especially the local economy. In fact, the more they control the economy, the more there is unemployment. If you look at data, where there is no, uh, let's say, organized criminality, or as I will tell you later, Organized criminality now has become more sophisticated. So, for example, in this part, in the northern part of Italy, there is less un unemployment. Where there is a lot of organized criminality, so in the southern part of Italy, there is uh, a lot of unemployment, especially between young people. So, what's going on? It's going on that people from this area, okay, are moving away and they are going here to the northern part of Italy. Uh, where there is more, much more, let's say, development. Uh, what kind of social issue and ethical problem is creating? First, the social issue uh, that is creating is that here, there are just old people now, and all young people are going or in the northern part or abroad, okay? So let's say that here there will be, the, pop the population will be lower and lower. And this means that, of course, there is no future for this part of the country, okay? The second problem is that, for example, these people here are low-income people. So criminality destroyed 
a place that is one of the most beautiful places, areas in Italy, is the southern part, of course. But criminality destroyed a place in social terms, in economic terms, in politics terms, and in future development terms. So, as I'm trying to tell you, you know, if you have corruption problems, e corruption issues, criminality issues, you cannot create good things for the future, but you will create bad things. And unfortunately, data show that this is true. Okay, so I was telling you about organized criminality and the, the, the problems that is causing. This issue is not an issue that comes from, you know, the ancient Rome, but it, it comes from, uh, uh, let's say, everyday life. This guy called Paolo Borsellino is a guy that uh, is considered an Italian hero because he fighted against mafia. He worked uh, in the public justice as a judge, okay? And uh, he was killed uh, by mafia because he discovered uh, during the late 90s, he discovered uh, the mafia, how it was working the mafia system. So he knew the names, he knew everything, and uh, unfortunately, uh, mafia decided that it was not, uh, you know, the case to talk too much about that. And this guy was killed. There is written that uh, chi ha paura muore ogni giorno means that if you worry, you will die every day. And there is written then chi non ha paura muore una sola volta. That there it means that if you don't worry, okay, you will, you will you will die just one thing, one time. Sorry. So if you worry every day, you will die every day. But if you don't worry, you will die just once. And of course, he he did the same, the second the second thing. But he is not the only victim of a corrupted state and unethical state. But his colleague that is called Giovanni Falcone was also a victim of uh, uh, this mafia state or mafia mafia times that I have not finished yet, unfortunately. This is uh, an historical moment in Italy when mafia decided to kill Paolo Borsellino, colleague called Giovanni Falcone. What mafia did? They followed Giovanni Falcone and they destroyed two kilometers of motorway in which Giovanni Falcone was going with his car, and they also destroyed his car, so he was killed. Just to make you understand what mafia can do in a state, in the southern part of Italy, to destroy, uh, let's say, people heroes against corruption and in favor of ethics. So you understand? So the reaction of the environment was to destroy heroes that was fighting for ethical problems, ethical issues. You understand? So I think it's very, very, let's say, sad to say. The same time, this guy was uh, a bit uh, more uh, luckier than uh, Paolo Borsellino and Giovanni Falcone because he started fighting ethical problems and he won, okay? He won uh, putting in prison a lot of people that were corrupted and destroying uh, a system thanks also to anti-corruption policies that were... Uh, active at that time in Italy, he worked very well to put to put in prison a lot of Italian, uh, let's say, politicians that were not working for the uh, state, but were working together with mafia, and they were, let's say, some some sometimes too much linked. An example of link, a very social link between, uh, unfortunately, an ethical problems, corruption, is the, the guy here, a young guy here on the left that you may know, maybe, is a young Silvio Berlusconi. This guy was the former prime minister in Italy, and uh, fortunately, or uh, uh, unfortunately, maybe fortunately, now is not anymore our prime minister. During his time uh, as a prime minister, we had a lot of problems with corruption, we had a lot of problems with unethical issues, we had a lot of problems with also our image abroad, okay? Uh, given the fact that he was caring just about uh, himself and not about the state. So as you can see, mm, the first question that I want to ask you is, uh, if a state votes for a guy that just cares about himself, 
it means that also local people care about just themselves and they want to be represented by a person that doesn't care about the state. So again, which is the relationship between our culture and our politician? My answer is that we choose, uh, we choose people that represent us, okay? So in this case, he was representing the, let's say, average Italian guy that uh, became rich uh, from nothing and started ruling. Okay, that then happened that the state um, was in an even worse condition, both in economic terms and social terms, but now, fortunately, things are recovering. For this reason, in, Ital in Italy happened something uh, very, very mm, weird, to be honest. In fact, this guy from TV show decided to react to the unethical problems that we have in Italy and created a political party from the internet. So this guy created a political party from the internet. And this guy, that is called Beppe Grillo, decided to create an Italian movement against corruption and unethical problems in order to create, let's say, new anti-corruption policies to fight uh, uh, the social problems that we have. Do you know what, hap what happened and is uh, happening now? That this guy now has the first political party in Italy. After three, four years uh, after the, the creation of the political party, this guy now is going to rule, uh, or maybe uh, in, the, in the next future, to rule the, the parliament, the Italian parliament. The techniques that he used were, were very simple. He first hired ordinary people from the internet. So he was saying, as in Italy, we are all corrupted. We don't care about having professional politicians. We want to have ordinary people. So if you want to be a person that uh, wants to change the country, come with us and let's try to do something, okay, all together. After four years, he has more than five million people voting for him, and they control everything from the internet, from a blog uh, of uh, this uh, political movement called Movimento Cinque Stelle, that means Five Stars Movement, that um, is, uh, let's say, in favor of ethical issues and anti-corruption uh, policies. Nevertheless, um, even though uh, we are trying to react to all these problems, unfortunately, uh, the situation is still not very good. In fact, in Italy, we have uh, social inequality that is booming. Why? If you, as I said uh, before, you are in the, the, from this part of Italy, especially from this part, from this area, that is the most industrialized one uh, and accounts for 70% of the Italian GDP, you are fine if you live in Milano, Venice, Turin, okay, Bologna, you, you are fine. But unfortunately, if you are from this part of Italy, okay, where you see the scissors here, so from Rome till uh, Palermo, you will have less opportunities. You will have less uh, job opportunities. You cannot go to the best, uh, uh, for example, universities you cannot afford the best hospitals, and so on and so forth. You understand? So let's say that now Italy is divided between the productive place and the touristic place, OK? The touristic place is this. The, the productive place is this. But unfortunately, if you visit this place, you will see that it's very wonderful, but poverty is growing. And unfortunately, there are also problems uh, with, as I told you before, organized criminality, corruption, and so on and so forth. All these things that I have said about Italy that are quite bad led us to be not competitive as a country. In fact, according to the World Economic Forum 2017, Italy is the 44th uh, most competitive country in the world, so not very good as we are the eighth biggest economy in the world, while Lithuania is far more competitive than uh, Italy, as you can see. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Sorry. As Lithuania is 35th. So why? Why we are not competitive? I will show you data. <coughs> the World Economic Forum says that we are not competitive 
because we have uh, four main issues related to our country. The first one, institutions. We are not able to manage in the proper way institutions because of corruptions, unethical problems, and more in general because people don't trust in public uh, institutions. Why? As, you can, as I said to you before, now we have a guy from TV show that has just founded a, a, a political party against corruption, against unethical procedures, and so on. So it's quite easy to understand that we have bad institutions in Italy, institutions that don't work very well, and the popular reaction, the, the reaction from people was to, to vote for a, a, a guy that comes from TV show and is against uh, um, corruption. So try to imagine the situation. It's highly critical. The third, macroeconomic environment. You know, if you have a huge public debt, if you are in, a, in a area, an economic area that is not growing, and more in general, you are not able to create public reforms that don't fix the problem of corruption, uh, unethical procedures, and, and so on, of course you will have a bad macroeconomic environment and you will not be competitive. The third, labor market efficiency. I told you before that corruption leads to non-meritocratic procedures, right? So, of course, if you, are not, if you don't deserve to be at work in that place, maybe you will not be productive, right? Or you will be less productive than people that are good at doing that job. In fact, the, seven pro the third problem that we have is about the seven pillar, labor market efficiency, where people that are, are not productive. They cost a lot of money, but they are not productive. So I think this is a big ethical problem, okay? And last but not least, but I won't go deep about this thing, is related to financial market development. I will just tell you about ethics and anti-corruption problems that we have just had two big scandals related to banks in Italy, to local banks, that are now costing to the public state 17 billion euros, okay, paid by citizens, because banks in Venice and Vicenza were not able to manage the money of local people. Okay, so try to imagine what I'm talking about. So, as you can see, corruption in Italy and ethical problems and ethics, ethics in general, is a huge, a huge issue. I think it's a, a, um, a cultural issue first. If you go back to the ancient Rome and you read ancient texts about uh, Cicerone, Seneca, and so on, you will see that they were having the same problems that we now have after 2,000 years. So I think it's a big cultural problem. Okay, so um, which are the most problematic factors, uh, problematic factors in Italy for doing business and more in general for fostering uh, uh, competitiveness? or that don't foster competitiveness in this case. The first, bureaucracy. Where there is too much bureaucracy, there is also corruption, okay? There is a direct link. Um, if you go to many states where there is too much bureaucracy, you will see that there is also corruption, okay? Um, for example, in Italy, it's like this. Uh, I work in Russia, it's also like this, and so on. The second is corruption, as I told you before. And the other problem is polity, Policy instability. You asked me to talk about anti-corruption policies, okay? I can tell you that in Italy it's difficult to, uh, to work in the anti-corruption policy field. Why? Very easy. Because every time the government changes, also rules change, okay? And there is no stability. So there is no stability because maybe as a government you want to favor this and that and not the good way. So what happens? It happens that there, there is no stability. And when there is no stability, there is corruption and so on and so forth. And for sure, there is no competitiveness. The paradox is that people in Italy, uh, most of the times, don't care. Why? Because, mm, as uh, I always say to my students, also in Italy, not just abroad, uh, we are suffering from the full belly syndrome. It means that after you have become rich, Okay. You don't care about uh, social problems and what you do, for example, you always buy new cars. As you can see here, in Italy we are at the, in the top nine countries uh, that buy car every year. Okay. As you can see here, 
Okay, there is China first, of course, because of population, but Italy is at the ninth place. So it means that, you know, we have problems, we have corruption, we have ethical issues and so on. But at the end of the day, people in Italy live in a country that is still rich, they can buy cars, and, you know, there is social inequality, but, you know, the more you are rich, and the more you become richer. The more you get poor and the uh, more you become poorer. But nowadays, you know, if you look at the big picture, you will see that we have these problems because people don't care. And at the same time, you know, they are still able to afford things. So it means they are not stimulated to change because they are still okay. At the same time, our society is becoming more individualistic. As I was saying that people don't care. If you look at the, the countries that uh, have the, let's say, biggest percentage of population that doesn't want to get married, okay, doesn't want a family, you will see that Italy is at the ninth place, okay, in the world. So it's in the top ten, okay. People in Italy don't want a family anymore. People in Italy don't want to get responsibilities. People in Italy don't want to get involved in social issues, social problems. They are becoming more individualistic. So this uh, figure here says that out of 1,000 1, uh, people in population, there are just three uh, people that are willing uh, to get married. The others are not. So you understand, you know, the world picture say that this country is in danger. And uh, we are in danger not only because of uh, uh, this, uh, let's say, situation, but because unethical issues in general are everywhere, not only in uh, gambling, not only in uh, social relationships, we also have uh, unethical issues uh, and also corruption problems in sports. Uh, look at uh, this chart, is quite interesting, that, say that says that uh, um, these are the number of violations in sport related to doping and irregular uh, let's say procedures. As you can see, Russia is the first top in the world. After Russia, that is, uh, let's say, the most uh, uh, doping-oriented uh, country, then there is Italy. So you understand, if you are uh, not ethical, you cannot be also fair in sports, where, you know, uh, being fair, being uh, correct is, uh, you know, the main uh, rule and is also the main uh, essence of uh, uh, being uh, in, in sport. So my question was, why fighting corruption in Italy matters for economic growth? Why? You know now this thing. You know why. Because uh, you, you have a big picture now of Italy. You know that maybe Lithuania is not that much uh, bad as you uh, could imagine before. And my answer is that if we live in a corrupted economy, we will have lower domestic business investment, for sure, okay? We will have lower foreign direct inflows, means we, people from the outside will not be attracted uh, by Italy because they will say, okay, look, if I put money there, there is organized criminality, there are people that are, cost a lot of money but are not productive, and so on. There will be less competition. Entrepreneurs, the local entrepreneurs, will not be willing to invest money because, of course, there are problems with corruption, bureaucracy, labor force, and so on. And more in general, also, uh, the composition of uh, government expenditure with the public debt that is rising and so on will not be that much, uh, will not be the, the best ever. So if there is corruption, the potential output, of course, it will be lower in terms of economic terms, social terms, and uh, future development. I will also tell you some last thing about this country, and that comes from the World Economic Forum. That is related to the fact that uh, the World Economic Forum, that is an international institution, says that reforms implemented in recent years have improved business perception of ethics and corruption, but public sector performance remains poor with pervasive red tape and highly inefficient judicial system. So it means that the country is not very, very safe, let's say, on the ethics and, uh, let's say, also the judicial system yet. At the same time, if you move on the right, 
Recent scandals in mutual banks have further undermined trust, while governance issues, including the strong link with local banking foundations, have been only partially addressed. So it means that I was telling you before, uh, local corruption, uh, unethical issues related to banks and to economic, uh, let's say, uh, bad procedures led the country now to have uh, new weaknesses, okay, even more than uh, in the past. So to conclude, which are the strengths, the weaknesses, the opportunities and threats of my country in terms of ethics, anti-corruption policies, and more in general about the future? As you can see, the strengths uh, from my country are related to the fact that it's a beautiful country, it's a still rich country, uh, and quite appreciated all around the world. But at the same time, the weaknesses are very, very strong because we have uh, a lot of problems related to corruption, uh, meritocracy that uh, maybe is not that much pervasive. And more in general, we have uh, a very uh, weak uh, institutional system that is not able to lead in the proper way the country. So, you know, these things are undermining our, our future. The opportunities for Italy, the opportunity is a cultural opportunity. First of all, we need people that uh, are more aware of what's going on. Unfortunately, in Italy, we still have a low level of people that are going to university and are getting a degree. So that's a problem because if you don't do it, you cannot be aware of what's going on. You cannot read data in the proper way. We are still poor in English speaking uh, people. So you understand you cannot have uh, relationships even abroad to understand, for example, if Lithuania is better or not. And it is now. So the opportunities, I think, are mostly related to cultural opportunities. And the threats. The threats, uh, the, the main threat uh, for Italy uh, uh, is, I think, again, the lack of culture, no? the lack of, of, uh, uh, of awareness related to what's going on. And another threat is related to the fact that the other countries all around us are growing. Okay? They want to grow, they want to do, do better things, and I think that you know, if we keep on going like this, we will uh, be behind many other countries as you uh, saw in the, in, the, in the chart related to the anti-corruption problems. So, to conclude, uh, which is my message? My message is that we should mind the cultural gap, okay, that is uh, very, very big in Italy. Uh, we should be aware of uh, the real problems that uh, we have, and we should also take into consideration that if we want to live in a better country, we need to be first uh, to become better people and to understand that just with ethical uh, procedures and ethical, uh, let's say, activities, we can uh, make this country better. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Professor, for this nice lecture and your insights about Italy. It was uh, very interesting to hear what is happening in the south of Europe and especially in different parts of the same country. So uh, I would like to ask to the audience if you have some questions for Professor. And please, people who are uh, connecting to this even online, please uh, write your questions in the chat line. So uh, do you have already some questions or you would like to have some minutes to think about it? Yes. So maybe I can ask one question for you, Professor. You mentioned about uh, your prime minister, or previous prime minister, Silvio Berlusconi issue. According to mass media, news reports, we know that there were some corruption cases very uh, close linked to this person. Can you tell me uh, main factors why this person remained in the same position for four periods cadences of the government? Yes, thanks for the question. So the question is why Berlusconi was uh, in power even though mm, he was, let's say, a corrupted person? Uh, the first uh, part of the answer is that uh, maybe um, maybe you don't know, but Berlusconi is now coming again to the power, okay? Because he has just won uh, elections in Sicily, okay?
okay? Uh, and uh, now Italians want him back. So this is the first part of the answer that is quite disappointing, at least from my point of view. The second part of the answer is that um, Berlusconi uh, was in power for so many uh, decades beca just because of one reason. It's a cultural and social reason. Berlusconi is a guy, or was a guy because now he's not uh, a young guy anymore, that first of all came from nothing. Okay, So he's like a self-made man. Okay, And Italians like self-made men because, you know, after the Second World War, Italy was very poor, and so there are a lot of self-made men. So they think that Berlusconi is like them, first. Second, Berlusconi is rich, and people, Italian people like rich people, okay? Uh, so this is uh, something also that uh, we should take into account. Third, Berlusconi mm, is also a very successful entrepreneur, okay? It's like the um, Italian Donald Trump, let's say. And uh, this is uh, something that Italians like because uh, they think that uh, if you are a successful entrepreneur, you can also be a successful, a successful sorry, politician and prime minister because if you made great your company, uh, you can also make great Italy. Okay? And last but not least, uh, Berlusconi really like enjoying life okay? in a very weird ways, but he, like, he likes. So um, Italian also like enjoying uh, uh, life, and uh, this, let's say, puzzle between richness, uh, uh, success, uh, enjoying life, and being, uh, you know, so much, uh, at least to Italian, uh, to the eyes of Italian, so much successful, made him being, let's say, so much, uh, so much resistant to public attack, both in Italy and uh, from abroad. So that's my answer. Thank you, Professor. It seems like more cultural issues are yes. uh, influencing the decision of society to elect this person. Yes. Uh, do you have already some questions, please? Uh, we have the guest from Special Investigation Service of the Republic of Lithuania, Rita Shikshnyene. She will give the question in Lithuanian, but I will try to translate okay. it. Thank you. Ar Italijoje yra specialia institucija, kuri kovoja su korupcija ir organizuotų nusikalstamumu? Uh, our guest is... Uh, wondering if Italy has a special institution responsible for fighting against corruption and as well as uh, organized criminality. Okay, thank you for the question. The answer is yes, we have. Uh, and uh, I will tell you also the, the, another Italian paradox. Not only we have, but it's one of the best in the world. I mean, yes, yes, I will tell you. Because... Um, Going back to the, this, um, this slide, because it's quite interesting. During these times, okay, uh, we had a problem. The state, okay, the state, the Italian state was uh, ruled, almost ruled, by mafia. So there was a commission, a linkage between mafia and the state. Uh, people from, uh, let's say, um, top force of uh, politics, okay, they were in touch with ma mafia, okay, and they were uh, unfortunately <clears throat> linked with mafia. For example, this guy here on the on the right, he was linked uh, uh, to mafia too. So what happened? That the state, the good state, had to react to the situation and uh, <clears throat> created uh, special rules special uh, task forces uh, in order to uh, eliminate the problem, okay? It's like uh, um, creating a, a strategy against uh, these bad things, these bad people. And from that period on, okay, Italy was very strong uh, to fight against this issue. Another problem is that in Italy, we also have this um, kind of uh, special institutions because of terror terrorism. Um, before mafia, we had uh, problems with terrorism, okay? Italian terrorism uh, is called Brigate Rosse, Red Brigade, okay? That uh, unfortunately also 
killed uh, Aldo Moro, that was one of the most important uh, politicians in Italy. And starting from that time till now, we have uh, this, uh, let's say, very, very huge attention to, ma to organized criminality fighting, uh, anti-corruption fighting, because as the phenomenon is very, very uh, strong in Italy, we need to fight. But the problem is that, as I told you before, that social issues are so difficult to erase, okay? Because, you know, when you have a lack of culture, you know, you cannot just uh, use institutions. You need what? You need universities, you need schools, you need people to teach you that this thing is bad. As, uh, as soon as we don't have this thing, we can, we can also have in good institutions, but we cannot uh, manage it uh, properly. <clears throat> um, I have to speak up. I have to speak up. I have to speak up. I kultūra galėtume pakeisti, kaip ta mąstymą galėtume metalų mąstymą pakeisti, kad jie būtų nepakantus korupcijai. Ačiū. Uh, Professor Rita uh, Talikina is belonging to the Department of Public Administration in Shule University, and uh, she's wondering, what do you think, how these cultural issues could be changed? How the intolerance to the corruption, to the criminality, could be changed in uh, the mindset of Italians? Thank you for the question. <clears throat> Um, I think that, you know, I visit many universities in Italy, many schools, and I travel all around Italy. And uh, what I've seen is that, uh, for example, if you go to Naples, Napoli, or if you go to other places, even nearby Venice, or nearby, let's say, Italian provinces in general, you see a lot of people that don't go to school, a lot of people that don't go to university, a lot of people that don't have a university degree, or they, they even don't have a high school degree. So you can say, you can tell to these people whatever you want, and they will believe you. You understand? Why? Because they don't have self-awareness on what's going on. So the first problem is that if you look at data, you will see that Italy is among the top economies in Europe, the one that has the lowest level of uh, people that have a degree, both at high school and uh, university. So these people are not well educated. If you are not well educated, you cannot understand what we are saying now. You understand? So there is, first of all, a problem in education. Every time I see people that uh, don't understand these things, unfortunately, are people that are not well educated. So the first thing is how to educate these people. We need to invest in schools. We need to invest in uh, training. But in a state that is not, let's say, that much uh, now healthy in terms of financials, because as you remember, we have uh, the public debt that is huge. Do you know what is happening now in Italy? If you have money, you can afford very good uh, instruction and training. If you don't have money, the public school, especially elementary school, high school, are suffering. Okay? So, if you are born in Naples, okay, and you go to the public school there, or if you are born in the province of Palermo and you go to the public school there, maybe you will be fine, but maybe you won't understand what's going on in real terms. So the social environment will eat you, and at the same time, you will not understand. Then if you don't speak English, you don't travel, you don't read newspapers and so on, you will be, let's say, destroyed by a system that doesn't want you to understand. So how to do it? Culture, culture, culture. If we don't make it uh, working properly, the country uh, will not work. That's it. That's my opinion. Uh, can I ask one question which is very uh, closely linked to the issue you already mentioned? 
few months ago we had a professor from Brazil and she was teaching uh, about adult education and she was telling about the situation what is happening in Brazil. There are some regions where the level of education is very low one. That means that the majority of adult people even doesn't know how to write and read. And she explained that politicians are investing to the education of people of that region just to teach them how to make the signature, to participate in elections and to vote for those particular politicians who invested in the education, let's say like education in commas. So my question is, can it be that there is a special interest of corrupted, let's say, or unethical government representatives not to invest to education and training of the society in Italy that they could not understand what is happening in the real life? Can it be like um, the strategy or something like this? Okay, thank you for the question. So. Um, you know, if you go back to history, <clears throat> sorry, and you see what the church did, the church uh, during the uh, Middle Age, no, they were trying to uh, keep people ignorant about many things in order to manage them, okay? Uh, this is something that comes from, you know, ancient times. We cannot say that it, it can be the same, you know, even uh, at the political level. But for sure, we can say that um, political politicians and politics is not well grounded, okay, in real in reality. I mean that it seems that once you become a politician, you are not aware anymore of what's going on in Italy, for example, or maybe in other countries, and you start doing things not for you know good things in good terms, but because of your own interest, okay. This is especially true in a country that is highly individualistic, like Italy, uh, highly corrupted, as you can see, and also that doesn't uh, promote uh, meritocracy. What's, what's, what, what is happening in Italy that makes uh, me very, very sad is that you know I teach in a private, I have been teaching in a private university, uh, in a private business school, uh, and I also teaching, <coughs> I'm also teaching in public uh, university or schools. Do you know what happens? It happens that you see the difference between rich people and ordinary people, and you see that the rich people will be, uh, let's say, um, uh, I don't know, more, um, let's say, help, m much more helped and sustained in getting a better job, a uh, better salary, and so on. Why? Just because they had the money to afford good uh, um, education. While if you cannot afford it, you will have less job opportunities and so on and so forth. So what I'm saying now, I'm seeing now in Italy is that there is a very huge division between if you are rich, if you are poor. Okay? If you are rich, you will become richer. If you are poor, you will become poorer. Okay? This is something related in general about capitalism. So if you are richer, you become richer. If you are poor, you become poorer. It's very bad that the state that should balance this situation is not able in Italy, as you can see, to balance the situation. Uh, but it's uh, unfortunately, you know, amplifying the situation. So which is the answer? The answer is that I don't know if uh, it's a strategy, okay? But for sure, the result is very, very clear. People that don't, cannot afford a good education are not learning and are not aware of uh, what's going on. Thank you, Professor. Uh, do we have some more questions? Please. And talking about penalties, uh, is it big? Is it enough to stop um, corruption in Italy? OK. Uh, I, I have to tell you the truth, as I'm, uh, I'm here to you know, make you aware of cultural issues ethical issues in Italy. If penalties are enough or not? Unfortunately, no. Why? Because another thing that um, uh, I've shown you before is that um, we have, maybe it's uh, here, 
we have on the left a judicial system that is not working very well. So what happens? It, it's like the Berlusconi story. If you are doing something bad in Italy, you know, if you live in a good state, you have to be, mm, let's say, fined or you have to be put in prison, right? While well, in Italy, it takes 10 up to 20 years before the judge and the judicial system uh, starts uh, deciding if you are good or bad. So meanwhile, you keep on going, doing things, you don't care, okay? And the other problem is that in a, in a state in which things don't work, there are a lot of rules, okay? But these rules are made not to be respected, okay? So it's like a reaction from the state. Things don't work, so let's put rules. But as we culturally are not oriented to respect rules, these rules won't work. And at the same time, the judicial system is overwhelmed with rules and a lot of judicial problems that make the judicial system very inefficient, okay? So at the end of the day, do you know what happens in Italy? You do bad things. If you are quite rich, think of Berlusconi, you can afford very good lawyers. And then you will say, OK, I did this, but you know, there is this rule that says so, oh, this rule that says so. And at the end of the day, we are fine. OK? So Italy in, it seems a place in which everything changes and nothing changes. OK? So, so this is the, the paradox. So if you are an ordinary person, maybe you will be fined and put in prison. Otherwise, there are solutions, let's say, not about corruption, but about good lawyers that will help you in doing something. Of course, there are other cases in which people are punished, but to be honest, it's a very little percentage. Okay. Okay, uh, can we go back to the institutions See. who are working yes. to for the anti-corruption policy? Of course, we did understand that to be a politician in Italy, that means you have to be um, aware of your relationships to mafia, not to declare, declare it, but usually it happens. Can so, happen. Yeah, can happen. What about public servants, civil servants working in the public offices? Yes. Do they have any uh, regulations on ethics and uh, what kind of institutions, internal institutions, are making decisions about ethical behavior of public servants? Okay, so uh, the first thing that I want to tell you is that, of course, uh, if you are a politician in Italy, you are not, of course, 100% connected to mafia, but could be, especially if you are a politician that works in the southern part of Italy. So this is the first thing. Second, about uh, uh, civil servants and uh, public servants. The situation there is different because it, they are not uh, connected that much with organized criminality and so on, but uh, they suffer from uh, low productivity. Okay, why? Because uh, after Second World War, our country was so poor and uh, you had two options. Or you were going to work in a factory, okay, a company, or maybe you were going to work for the state. And so the state had to hire so many people, so many people. And of course, these people were at first not very well educated, okay? They were not uh, very, let's say, highly skilled. So what we, saw, we are still suffering from this situation now because these people now, they are 60, 65, they are still working. They cost a lot of money to the state, okay, and they are not productive. So we don't have a problem with corruption in, uh, within civil servants in Italy. We have a problem of uh, low level of productivity, okay, and very, very, very low, uh, very slow procedures, okay. For example, if you have to build a new part of your company, nearby your company, and you need to ask to bureaucratic office what you have to do, it takes one year, two years. You understand? So it takes a lot of time. And this is not acceptable if you want to be competitive. About uh, ethical um, procedures, uh, of course, we have uh, institutions related to this kind of, uh, um, let's say, activities uh, within uh, bureaucracy. 
but they are perceived like uh, you know window dressing i mean okay we need to have it because we need to have it but it's not part of our everyday life you understand because it's related to rules it's related to uh, culture and it's related to being very competitive one day but it seems that this country is not willing to do so Thank you. And you mentioned institutions, internal uh, institutions of bureaucracy fighting for dealing with an, uh, an ethical problems. Uh, could you tell us what kind of representatives are included to those institutions? Let's take a Lithuanian case. We have local uh, government and we have anti-corruption uh, commissions working uh, on ethics of public se civil servants and we have uh, ethics uh, commissions of councils which are dealing with ethics issues of the politicians working for local community. So in that case, uh, according to our newest law, some representatives from local community has to be included to those commissions to monitor all procedures, to be the voice of the community and the society. What is in your case? What kind of representatives are included to those institutions dealing with this issue? In Italy, it's just the same. So the same uh, system. <clears throat> uh, so the system is just uh, similar, or maybe the same. The problem is not about the system. The problem is about people, because uh, <clears throat> you you see, uh, if uh, you create a set of rules and a set of procedures, it's fine, it's okay. But then the problem is. Will people be so much ethical in respecting rules during that kind of activities or not? Because, you know, in Italy we are plenty of system of activities and procedures and rules. <clears throat> but at the end of the day, you need to understand if you are able as a person to respect rules. And to be honest, in this cultural context, I have some doubts. Okay? So that's the problem. We have the same system, but maybe the result, as you can see from statistics, is a bit different. Maybe for the final uh, question, uh, if you let me to ask. I do understand that we have problem. I do understand that we have some procedures, as you mentioned, the system which should work, but you mentioned the aging society, how it's difficult to change the mindset of the system because of aging population. Uh, do you see some positive progress of young people, of young generation? And what kind of trends or uh, issues you would prefer your government should take to make Italian uh, society and policy more transparent? Okay, thank you. So, first question is uh, if I see some uh, progress between young people in Italy. I have the opportunity to work with young generations because uh, I, I work at university or I work in companies that have to make the transition from the old generation to the new generation. What I see I see that young people from Italy are less hungry than uh, old generation. I mean that they also suffer from the full belly syndrome, no? But if you go to China, if you go to many other states, it's just the same. So it, it seems that they don't like taking responsibilities. But at the same time, I have to say that this young generation is quite clever, is quite open-minded, is more global-oriented, and uh, more international. So it's like the Erasmus generation. No? And uh, I have to say that they are more aware of uh, which are the problems, but I am afraid of the fact that, you know, um, they are more aware, but, you know, and I, I really hope that things could change because they are more, let's say, well uh, educated, because they are, let's say, mm, more responsible, okay? But at the same time, I'm curious to understand if the fully, full belly syndrome will take place also in the future. Let's say that right now my outlook is positive 
and uh, I am op optimistic, okay, about uh, Italian young generation. What about the government? The first thing that I would do, uh, if uh, I have to say the truth, is to ask the Italian government to invest in public instruction, okay, public education, and not to divest as they are doing now. Because if you cut funds and money to public culture and public education, <clears throat> sorry, the country doesn't have a future. So the first thing is educating people. <clears throat> sorry, educating people. If you don't educate people, especially on uh, um, ethical issues and more in general about state issues that could lead to problems, structural problems, and in school, in Italian school, I can tell you that nobody teaches about these things, okay? So the, the, public, uh, um, the public sector is um, not very well studied, especially at high school, elementary school. They should put in the mind of people, okay, <clears throat> starting from elementary school, that the state is important, that public administration is important, <clears throat> sorry, and that we must respect institutions. If we don't do it, you know, the situation could be even worse. So th thank you, Professor. If you let me, I will stand closer to you. So uh, first of all, thank you so much for being here and for giving so important insights on the Italian case. I think that something is very close to what is happening in Lithuania. We hope that we are in a better situation, as you mentioned. Yes. But wow. at the same time, we do understand that we have some problems as well in policy making, in policy implementation. At the same time, we are dealing with those ethical problems as you do, but we are happy that we have no so much killing because of corruption issues. So uh, Italy and Lithuania, uh, can be examples how to make a progress that means that to invest in young, in young generation education. And as uh, our professors during public administration classes for students are telling, education of anti-corruption education is the key issue for our society to become more transparent, more open-minded and intolerant for corruption. So thank you once more for your thank nice you. Thank uh, public you lecture. Thank you everybody for being here and thanks for colleagues who are connecting to our uh, public lecture from South Korea, uh, from Korea Republic, uh, from Bulgaria and other countries. Thank you colleagues for being with us this uh, time. And we are inviting everybody to connect to our next uh, events of Research as Excellence Network online. So thank you very much and uh, see you in next events.